Hello, and welcome to another Warrior's Den recap. This week is actually exciting, with real content. Well, the real content comes next week, but this week is the good stuff. So to start off is when is the patch coming? It's been approved. Both of the consoles have it, so one week from today, that is next week Thursday, we will have the patch. This is the exciting patch with all the neat changes in it. Training mode trials, arenas, whatever. The warrior trials will be coming. The arena will be coming. With this launch, we will also be getting Dance of Death, so that'll be pretty badass. And then on the 26th, we will be getting the dual arenas added to the duel and brawl playlist. On the 27th, the faction war ends, and we get a dueling execution order. We will also be getting a double loot fest on May 4th, so if you want to grab some cosmetics, you can play up a little bit then. We will also be having other unannounced events between May and Season 6th, and we will be having a warrior rush on May 11th for some steel right before Season 6 drops. Then for this week, we have battle outfits on sale. The 1500 steel is now worth 1000 steel, the 3000 steel for 2000, the 5000 steel for 3000. So if you like the color palettes or you want the shapes that they come with, you can go ahead and pick those up, they're on sale. And we will also be having a tribute vanquisher event this weekend. It is complete as many tribute matches as possible. Participation is required, so play at least one tribute match this weekend and you'll get 2,000 steel. That will be starting tomorrow morning. Then we have this week's elite outfits for weekly content. And some information to add is the arena mode is bringing the arenas. Who'd have thought? These maps have no environmentals. They are just circular little arenas that you need to beat each other up in. There's no objects in the way. There's no spikes. There's no pits. It's just you and somebody else locked in a circle. They gave us a short preview of these with their overview maps. Personally, I think the pit looks totally badass. And for those night fans out there, you get to fight on Mount Ignis. So that's a pretty cool map. In other changes, we have bundle previews being enabled. So you can now preview the bundles, see what's in them, what the things look like, and which ones you currently have unlocked. This will be a fantastic feature for seeing what things you'll get from your purchase with events, where you get some of the loot through the gameplay. Because now you can go ahead and check them out straight on the page and not have to worry about it and see which ones you need to collect still. This is also useful for the mythic outfit bundles that come up, as you can see what they look like in the armory system using your character. We will also be getting full controller remapping. It's bound in zones due to a technical limitation, so there's no rebinding zone to a single button, but you can bind guard break to right bumper or select if you really wanted to. For an example of bound as a group, the right side button, which is B or circle I believe, those are bound to faint, cancel, and use. So if you wanted to rebind faint on the left bumper, you would also be moving your use and cancel buttons to left bumper. It's not a huge deal, but it's a technical limitation of the way the game works, so sadly that won't be coming to give you single button zones. They're also rebalancing gear stats. They're squishing the damage from attack and the damage reduction from defense, as well as reducing defense penetration to align more closely with damage defense. For example, attack penalties from gear are being reduced from negative 25 to negative 15. They're also reducing the maximum attack bonuses in a similar fashion. Damage defense is being reduced from 23% to 17% bonus and negative 31 to negative 17. So these are a lot more squished and you'll be giving up a lot less defense and a lot less attack if you go into other stats. And then defense penetration will be altered similarly so it'll have slightly less imbalance between players and slightly less impact overall on negating the enemy's defense. Following up with a change that I'm super excited for, pings. The scoreboard will be displaying a numerical ping value. You can finally see your own ping in game as well. So now you can see if the issue is you or if somebody else instead of just seeing yourself with green all the time. That's super awesome because now you won't see everyone else's lagging if your connection is garbage. This will help people troubleshoot and see if they're the actual issue. And then before we get into the next part, the full patch notes will be posted on Wednesday the 18th. That is the day before the patch hits next week. But just to give us a preview, they went in and gave us a lengthy talk on what some of the major changes are. To start with, they're removing the 10 minute quit penalty from non-ranked matches. This applies to most forms of leaving, including AFK timeouts, as far as I'm aware. They fixed the quit to desktop error on PC where the game doesn't actually close 
windows, they also should have fixed the memory leak. This is a major fix for a lot of Windows 7 users, and it should fix the vast majority of the memory leak issues that are occurring. They will also be implementing lag compensation with the patch. That will be PC only for the first week. If everything goes well, console players will be getting it seven days later through a live update. They also have some general fixes for tribute, zip lines, dominion issues that are fixed, such as the random extra respawn penalty, even when you're not executed, customization bug fixes, reputation issues, unlocking things, emotes being fixed, that type of stuff. Just overall cosmetic and general bugs with the game, there's a lot of them being fixed. They are also normalizing sound levels and or fixing them where needed. It's basically a sound level balance pass. I'm really hoping that part of this is fixing the tribute noises because they are really loud. And then for actual game balance, they are changing back dodges. This will apply to all heroes and normalize them. Back dodge is being normalized to 1.75 meters. They are also adding a 1100 millisecond recovery to all back dodges, again normalized. They are also fixing the reflex guard bugs. This should finally be fixed. They're changing how deflect works so that it will deflect the second attack instead of blocking it. This isn't a massive balance change, but it makes it a ton cooler. In their words, this isn't a bug fix, this is a cool fix. The example given was Berserker's zone being deflected. Instead of a deflect into a block, you will instead deflect five times and then launch your attack. It'll just look cooler. It's a similar story with multi-attacks which would be you getting ganked. There was a bug with Aramusha relating to Reflex Guard not being able to recover. This has been fixed. It shouldn't affect his overall balance, it's just an inconsistency because it only happened some of the time. They saw Conqueror got too good in Season 5, so a few things are being adjusted to nerf him. It shouldn't be an overtune. Just for an example here, they're nerfing the light attack from 15 damage to 13 damage. This should result in needing just one more attack to 100 to zero somebody, resulting in more revenge for a ganked target. Not a huge issue. They are buffing Warlord's all block stance stamina upkeep so that it takes 25% less stamina to hold it. They are bringing Berserker down a little bit. The one thing they brought up was they are nerfing his slashing rush from 30 damage to 24. They are also nerfing the back zone by reducing the first attack damage a little bit so that the second attacks need to do more damage. This will nerf back zoning as a berserker by preventing you from nailing all of your attacks into them easily. They are changing how Demon's Embrace works in a gank. If somebody in your team kills the Demon Embraced target, you no longer get health. So there's now a slight downside to ganking while Shigogi grabs. They are correcting zone feedback when you faint it. Shigoki is one of them, that's the example they gave. And for this, my understanding is they're just adding better feedback to when somebody faints a zone. They are nerfing the Shinobi and Gladiator back strafe movement speed. This pairs with the back dodge nerfs, they're the worst for running away, and this should nerf the assassins always running away issue that people have. And for the excitement of those of you who like to punch people, Centurion has gotten a buff. His HP was increased to 120. He also got a light into heavy chain, so he can go light heavy now instead of only light light. This should give him some form of mix up if he actually lands a light. He also has other minor damage changes, but we'll have to wait until next week for those because they're lengthy and small and they didn't go over him. Gladiator is getting some quality of life changes, again next week. Highlander zone is being buffed, so his tracking is better at killing minions, and so that it actually cleaves minions. This should just be an overall buff to Highlander actually being a B-point hero because the animation looks like it should be good. And then in the exciting bit that wasn't actually announced this week, PK, Warden, Valkyrie, Orochi, they weren't mentioned for a reason. Maybe you can read between the lines? That's a quote from Roman. So, so in my own words, I would assume this means that there's no changes for them as they're being reworked for Season 6. We should get news on that in two weeks, and that will be very exciting if Valk is actually getting a rework. And hopefully Peacekeeper will be brought down in line without being undertuned. For those of you who play Valkyrie today though, next week you will be getting more animations and smoother animations. It shouldn't be anything game changing. In fact, it shouldn't actually change anything about the way she plays. It should just make things smoother and nicer to look at. And now, if I'm not mistaken, that should cover everything from this week's Warrior's Den. 
overall, I think it was a fantastic show. Brought us a ton of good news, really exciting changes, and the fact that we get the patch next week with all of these teasers for the full patch notes next week, it is going to be a great day next week when Thursday happens and we get this nice large patch. So that'll be all for me. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you on the battlefield.